lesson number one. It's not the last half mile that's the most dangerous, but the half mile before the last half mile. The only danger at the checkpoint was oneself. If they were going to pick you up in East Berlin, they'd have done it already before you got anywhere near the wall. Crossing from the east to west with the wrong papers. It was Bernard Sampson I was frightened of. Because the only thing to be afraid of here is being afraid. The guards can smell it. It's what they're looking for. Lesson number two. Never be quite as tired as you really are. Being tired is the only thing I can really remember. Who are you? Personnel. I like to know my staff. Staff? Morgan. Director of establishment. Sitting watching old movies? It happens to be my job. Turning the pages of someone's life, Morgan. It's my job. Your career profile, Samson. I wouldn't want to find we've been underestimating your potential to the department. It says in here, accumulation of stress. How about loss of nerve? The difficulty is to understand the meaning of fear, real fear. What exactly is dangerous, do you think? Well, crossing the road can be dangerous, Morgan, if you're not concentrating. And in Berlin. Why would I have been frightened? Berlin was home. You live in London now, Samson. Do you belong in London? I belonged in Berlin. Not anymore. Any part of your life in here you'd like me to have shredded? Not that the file is a key to a man. And subordination on every page. Still, something somewhere seems to have gone wrong. <laughs> Speaking for myself, I wouldn't even attempt it. <laughs> Whoops, sorry. Oh, it's all right, Ben. We just finished. Anything in the German newspapers today, Bernard? Press summary by lunchtime, Brett. Unless you want to recommend more staff. Projections for the East German economy and how to program one of our computers for it. to lunch. Coming to slum it in the canteen today? Oh, you know I can't stand that place. Toad in the hole, Tuesday. <laughs> exactly. Von Rumer's announcement of increased long-term credit for East Germans. That's what Brett's been waiting for. He wanted to take that and you with him to the cabinet office today. Oh, nonsense. Oh, want a bed? A dozen oysters at Scott's. Two dozen? Be a part to cut that out for you.
Oysters. Oysters. Cabinet office. Oh. Well, the bet was won before it was made. Unfair competition, Fiona. You know, you're going to have to tell them at the office where you got this thing from. Otherwise, people are going to start thinking you need investigating. Well, if they want to investigate Daddy, they're welcome to. You still accept his little present, though, don't you? It's a cheer-me-up for my birthday. I wonder what he's going to give me for mine. <laughs> Last time, it was a gift-wrapped bottle of brandy with the compliment slip from his stockbroker still inside. before your sister realizes she's under observation. She'll be terribly embarrassed. And don't you dare bully her. I mean, it's so discreet. We're back in the middle of Mayfair. Does she do it to challenge her husband? Or does she do it to challenge God? Or is it all Daddy's fault again? Not that that... Wimp looks substantial enough to be a father substitute. Wasn't he some sort of FCO runner for us in the Berlin office? Runner? Darling Giles Trent was a foreign office undersecretary. Scraping the hammer barrel a bit, aren't we? He's a wickermist, actually. Oh, he's a wickermist, yeah. Oh. I'll have a dozen oysters and a Dover sole. And some of that shabby. Oh, uh, cotton chips and a pint of iron. No, I'll just tell him. Dover's hole in them. Get locked. I think we're about to be seen. Come on. Oh. <laughs> Hello. We thought we'd join you for a glass of your bubbly. Excuse me. That is, we're not uh, interrupting anything, are we? Of course not. <laughs> Giles, you remember Fiona? Hello, Fiona. Hello, Giles. Bernard Sampson, isn't it? That's right. You were spying. How long have you been sitting over there? Used to be my job, Tess. Oxford. Catching up on gossip. I never knew you were at Oxford, Tess. I used to go to the parties. How are the children, darling? Well, you used to be a sort of liaison for us in Berlin, didn't you? FCO Stringer. Odds and sods. And secretaries, Giles. And how is foreign and common? Under siege. We're not much liked in Downing Street. Who is, except the Treasury and the White House? <laughs> I hear your lot don't actually exist anymore, officially. Must make life difficult, explaining to the bank manager who actually pays your pittance. Stuck in London office now, are you? Miss the travelling, you? I saw Dickie the other day. He's getting terribly whimsical, isn't he? Just like he was at Balliol. Of course, he never had any money. Always had to try too hard. Almost as bad as not trying hard enough. I believe your oysters are calling, Fiona. Sorry, old man. You should have learned by now that you can never beat them at their own game. I still believe it's my duty to try. How do I get across to your yellow submarine? You can't. Not without desk authorization. Or mine. You're unusually wide awake tonight. Oh, you should be so lucky.
Berlin, divided into sectors under military occupation by Russia, America, France, and Britain. August the 13th, 1961. About two o'clock in the morning, cab drivers suddenly started reporting that they were being stopped and questioned every time they crossed into or out of the Russian sector. British intelligence decided to send in two younger operatives to investigate. You? They found the sector boundaries manned by military patrols and large army trucks offloading rolls of barbed wire. A couple of days later, they started to replace the wire with the wall. You make it sound like you'd never been there. Hmm. Right, next. Friedrich Strasse Station. Hmm. It's the weakest membrane in the wall. Uh, sorry, Samson, no rooms needed. Uh, resume lesson next week. Same room, same time. Well, this field craft stuff's all a bit old hat, isn't it? How can you bear to be stuck in this ghastly building, putting up with idiots like that? Ah, but the idiots, Julian, are safe behind their desks. They've never been on the other side of that wire. It's like the skewer through a shish kebab, the east-west axis. The Russians acquired the state opera, the royal palaces, and the worst slums. The west got the zoo, the nightclubs, and the houses of the rich in the Grunewald. Oh, if only it were all that simple. It had once been part of my job to guess what frightened a man. Now I've had five years to peel away the scab of my own fear and pick at the tender wound of failure and come to tolerate the company of idiots. has been shredded from the last time I crossed the wall. No one can understand real fear. Who has not walked that last 20 yards when you have passed the checkpoint, but not yet through the wire into the west. That's when you learn the real taste of adrenaline. I've been waiting all the damn day for you, Bernie. I don't do it for fun. You know perfectly well, KGB are over the wire all the time. So I watch your tail. Ich pass auf dich auf, geht's ja. You ask me how I am, you give me the biggest fright of my life. Boiling up, hmm? yeah. Are you picking up for the office? Sure. You go home. How does it feel over there? People are nervous. You feel all right? I feel five years older. You've only been gone 72 hours. You were in Berlin all the three days? I never moved outside the city limits, did I, Bernie? You have a nerve, Bernie. One day, they'll lock you up. One day, I expect they will. Just... Oh. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. Werner, always.
always liked to make out he was just the office boy. But he and I shared a lifetime of dangerous games and a friendship which had begun as children under a railway bridge halfway between the Kudam and Kachlasa, long before the war was ever there. The war made coming home dangerous in Berlin. Changing character, changing costume, changing face. The danger of beginning to relax too much. Home then was Berlin, and my wife and the kids. And the landlady had always treated me like the child she never had. And the flat at the top of a lodging house Joking. Isol might stoke it up now you've come home. My Liebling Bert. Werner was a bit worried about you. Yeah. I'm afraid Dickie's invited himself for dinner. I'm sorry, darling. There was nothing I could do. <laughs> you cracked Carl's horse. Well, the computer cracked it. No, no, the computers don't get brownie points. You fed the ideas in. A little bit. <laughs> Carl's horse, very big. You crack that, you'll make me redundant. The children are waiting for you upstairs. Oh. I always need Dickie like a hole in the head. I'd been back for five minutes and the thinking and chattering classes were already beating a path to my door. And all to pick my brains because one Russian military code from their radio transmitter at Karlshorst has been deciphered by my wife. Oh, Dickie, you silly man. Your rose and blue one in Berlin. Tricky, oh, Dickie, crier. We're going through, please. In certain respects, the most qualified British graduate in SIS intelligence. First class honours in bullshit. Oh. Uh, Giles Trent was saying that Daphne's gone home. Oh, she's house hunting, old thing. Oh. Amazing. Uh, what's this, a posting back to London, Dickie, or another Bambino? Hello, Bernie. I'm Geschenk. For her, Samson. Oh. This is all wonderfully kitsch. Now, this is where Bernie used to live when he was a bambino, Dickie. One is not allowed to criticise. You've been listening. I haven't heard a thing for three days. Why, sir, have you been over? Why don't you pour yourself a drink? Things are hopping up. <laughs> You picked the right time to crack Carl Solst. I, uh, I don't suppose they're showing any of this on the other side of town. I wouldn't know. Right. Oh, Fiona. Oh. Island days with a touch of brandy. And some more fume. Oh. It's actually a rather wet scrambled egg with a bit of dried kipper on it. 
Und genau das haben die Fabrikarbeiter in ganz Polen. Oh, how's Frankfurt these days? Actually, Frankfurt bloody boring. A few cowboys have all the fun. Fun? Still. Hard time you hung up with guns, isn't it? It's also be a fine thing. Perhaps to the German desk back home. Oh, you have the seniority, of course. Why the German desk? Brett Rensler dropped down dead? Brett has his eye on higher things. <laughs> I heard someone say he was here in Berlin. Something to do with Karl Sorst? No, Dickie. You know he's wangled himself a whole new section. No, all they're going to do is to spend their entire time analysing the stuff you run in from Brahms Network. I mean, it doesn't make sense, does it? Office politics, Dickie, it's all over my head. Dass sie ihre Anliegen in den Massenmedien veröffentlicht. Serious escalation of Poland's industrial unrest. The independent trade union movement Solidarity yesterday demanded removal of the country's security apparatus and threatened a general strike. Oh no no, no. Daphne's longing to get us all back in the harness. Stick the boys in the boards. <laughs> I found these because there's the rooms at the back of the house. That's always the bloody train from Moscow, it Tell me, how do you read the situation in Poland? How do you read it, Dickie? If the Russians were going to roll their tanks, they wouldn't be risking opinions in opposition. Opinions? There's a Warsaw Pact summit in Moscow next week. How the hell do you know that? Well, that's part of the information I bring back from Brahms and other sources. Have you reported it? I've only been back three hours, you know. You go down, all right? Yeah, he's fine. <laughs> Liesel, darf ich vorstellen, Mr. Cryer. Angenehm. How do you do, madam? All right, Bernie, I'll see myself out. So, now you can take a schwasser with your Liesel. Come on. Who is your frightened Mr. Cryer? Ein Kollege. Yes, colleague and lay friend. Ah, a colleague who medicine verkauft. Another in the pharmaceuticals. Liesel, what do you think is going to happen? Bundesbank. <laughs> Poland. Ah, Poles are always trouble for Germany. It seems to me as if it's the Poles who are in trouble. Look, sir. Thank you. Auf dich, Bernie. Auf uns. You've been in the East. I can smell it on you. Don't worry about the Poles. They will survive. They always do. Worry instead about your Mr. Rensler. Do you have a permit? No, 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 no. It's Giles Trent. He's an old friend, FCO. Oxford and Balliol? Yeah, that's about it. Bernard's married to one of the Kimber Hutchinson girls. Really? Lovely dinner last night, Bernard. Cordon Bleu, young Fiona is. Remember me to her. Watch the proctors don't catch you, Trent. We're out of bounds to Foreign Office staff. He only works across the courtyard, you know. You don't have to treat him like a bloody alien. Dickie. What's going on? You didn't tell me you'd come from London last night. Ah, oh, well, you're being rather previous, Bernard. Basically, it's Karl Scholz from Poland. We don't actually know how the Polish army would react if the Russians walk in. 
You ought to run Yuri Rostov into Gdansk. What the hell's going on, Frank? Yuri Rostov. Has everyone gone crazy? This is a London directive, laddie. Yuri Rostov to Gdansk. And Bernard Sampson picked to run him in. Yuri Rostov is 170 years old, Frank. I am not taking him over the wire. Yuri's already over the wire. He went on a French passport. He's waiting for you there in Gdansk. To make contact with his son. We don't know anything about his son. Stefan Rostov. Been in Gdansk since 15th of August. What about his political views? He's a Russian-trained communication specialist. One of the few Polish officers privy to the Warsaw Pact communiques. Yeah, all of which would be totally irrelevant if he won't talk to us. We won't know if we don't try. Do you mean there's no indication? You're going to send me blind into Gdansk to turn a Polish army officer, and the only link we've got with him is his 70-year-old father? This is a London directive, Bernard. Oh. What if I refuse to go? Someone less competent will take your place. And it'll be generally assumed you bottled out. You think what you like. This operation's up and running. London orders we obey. Yuri Rostov is waiting for you in Gdansk. I never abandon agents. Yuri Rostov into Gdansk. That's us, is it? He's sitting there waiting for me. Yuri's an old man. What the hell are they doing with him? Dicky Cryer's got London office to fix the papers for me. But you can't go in again so soon. I'm going to need someone over there with me, Werner. Better get in touch with Rolf Mauser. Rolf Mauser? Sagt er nochmal. He's Bram's network, Bernie. Tell him to leave me a car in the usual place. A hire car. With papers for Poland. Tell him to get himself into Gdansk. And give me a rendezvous ten miles out of town. Brett Rensselaer will crucify you. Would you rather I went alone? used to say he was a Berliner. Ich bin ein Berliner. One day I'll tell the poor man that ich bin ein Berliner actually means I'm a donut. Brett Rensler. Even then he was a pure mid-Atlantic man by way of Oxford and Harvard. Brett had spent his life in swivel chairs, arguing with dictating machines and smiling for committees. He always made me feel as though my fingernails were dirty. Berlin's a bit close to the Indians for you, isn't it, Brett? They normally send over raiding parties for big shots like you. So you got back last night. You know? I don't think anybody's supposed to know about that. Huh? Make contact with any of our Brahms people? Oh, I saw lots of people, Brett. Mauser, Rolf Mauser. Well, everything's fine. The Brahms network is functioning normally. I'd rather you had nothing on your files back home saying precisely who I did or did not see. Bad for security. We leak like a sieve. We do? I meant over the years, Brett, 
They don't exactly have a watertight record. Dickie Cryer has a signed directive for you from the Director General. He's gone over my head. Really? Mm -hmm. Directive to do what? Your work is with Brahms, and anybody in the Brahms network is off limits. I want that clearly understood. Well, if that's your directive, Brett, then I suggest you come up to the stadium office and tell them your story. <laughs> Berlin Field Ops is Frank Harrington's territory, and Frank is your problem, Bernard. I'll not have anyone in the Brahms network used on some madcap scheme dreamt up by Dickie Cryer and his frantic efforts to grab my job. Up for grabs, is it? I don't see Dickie running the German desk. He doesn't even speak the language. That's usually considered a qualification in British intelligence. Uh, what exactly is Dickie's madcap scheme? Strictly speaking, the promotion into my present job should be yours. I won't pretend I don't have influence in the choice of my successor. I'm a moment, Peter. On the other hand, you use someone from Brahms Network to further Dickie Cryer's projects. Buster from the field, Bernard. So help me God, I will. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Lisa, happy birthday to you. <laughs> this is bizarre. Liesl still sees us as ten years old. Birthday tease and I'm frightened. And Werner hates to be left behind. Even on this one, he wants to come with me. Mein Freund, as always, I wish you were coming with me. I trust you. Nach Liesl. Und bleib anständig. Oh, anständig. Well, you say hello and goodbye in the same breath these days, Werner. Du kommst an und schwupps, bist du wieder weg. Was ich schwupps bin ich weg, ich muss arbeiten. <lacht> Good night, Fiona. Good night, Werner. Just Bernie. Get some sleep. You are going to need it. Western journalists. In the crowd. I'm frightened. Why? Because you're frightened. Halunke, wie heißt ihr? You're late, as usual. Whose bad idea was all of this? Have you found Yuri? He's not the man you remember. He's over! Yuri is an old man, Bernd. He sits in his hotel and won't make a move until he sees you. The Eubanks, the secret police, they frighten him. They're all over town. The 
Russians are sitting just inside the front here. A couple of tanks ready to block the road. And half an army is sitting somewhere in the woods. So half the Red Army sits on the Polish frontier? And London Central sends a couple of old buffers like Yuri and me on the sort of crazy game we used to play 30 years ago? You think your people in London understand what happens in Central Europe? The Cold War has changed. It's time you told them, Bernd, before they get us all killed. He'd always tell me the truth exactly like it really is, and then go on to tell me everything else I didn't want to know or remember. But he was a good man in a crisis. <laughs> It really amused Yuri we should meet again in the middle of a demonstration in Eastern Europe, surrounded by militia. Like the good soldier he once had been, he did as he was told, however stupid. He thought it was funny, but it sure as hell unnerved me. And, of course, Rolf was right about Yuri. He looked like a man who wished he'd stayed at home. I am checked in already. If anyone stops you, you're staying in another hotel, the Mosque. You're just visiting someone, here, yes? Solid drop of alcohol, this whole bloody metropolis. Solidarity is on the wagon. I'll see you later. I don't know, Bernard, but. Uh... It doesn't feel like one of your operations. Yuri, have you contacted your son? I was told to wait for you to come. Um, what's he called, your son? Stefan. Stefan. How often do you usually telephone him? His birthday, his mother's birthday, New Year's Day, when? They do not switch off the phones. Your son is alone with a small detachment of the maintenance corps in a huge barracks on the edge of the town. Better you do it face to face. I tell you, if we'd been squatting outside a NATO barracks for three hours, the Bulldogs would have thrown us in a paddy wagon by now. <laughs> they don't need security yet. It's an overflow building waiting for the Russians. Besides, they're used to solidarity, keeping an eye on it. There. God, he's become so old. Yuri, make it clear you need to talk to him. Being tempted so cruelly by Dickie in London. All that way, and what it came.
came down to was an old man meeting his son. Perhaps, he thought, for the last time. Przyjaźnie. Znamy się dobrze od dwudziestu lat. No dobrze, dobrze, dobrze. A nie pojedziecie? Just, just to tell him the times are dangerous for you and for his country. Przychałem pomóc. Pomóc? Pomóc mnie? To help the situation. The situation. The information we require is to help your country, not to damage your allies. Troop movements, uh, standing orders for certain given circumstances. The West does not want to make mistakes that might harm your country. Who are you? <laughs> but you have the stars for spying now. You can see everything from your satellite. Yes, the Russians we can see. The Poles are a little less obvious. Nowadays, that's life. But... Name a time and a place Check. for seeing you again. Tonight, tomorrow, wherever, whenever you wish. Your father and I will stay in this hotel room in the hope that you may call. See you. <laughs> what, what will he do? Come on, Yuri is your son. What's, what will he do? Gonna send the Ubex up here. Hello there. Now what is your ragged rag? Couldn't find you in the hotel register. Thank you. Agency are you, I suppose? Responsible reporting and all that, eh? Yeah. So, what are you? AP, UP, Reuters? I know, I am freelance. Accredited? No. Oh, living dangerously, are we? Press releases inside, I'm sure you will find lots of material to send home. Madam, my humble newspaper, if newspaper it can be called, demands I only send them one anti communist story per weekday and per sex for Sunday. Then we should explain to your readers that we are still socialists here, and some of us still communists. Polish sex. I'm afraid you will have to find for yourself. Excuse me. Yes. Um, you must get awfully tired of Western journalists. The news you print also finds its way back to our own people over your radio. Journalists have served a purpose for us, as have some of your decadent Western songs. Do you mind if I ask you, um, but what do you think will happen if the Russian troops come in? Do you believe they will come? I don't know. If it did happen, both the church and solidarity will tell people to go to their place of work and adopt passive resistance. Yes, but will... Sorry. Would they obey? 
Hmm? I mean, initially, they'd be fighting their own people, wouldn't they? That's the Russian way of doing it. And what have you come to see? Hmm? The Polish army killing the Polish people? If uh, his son decides to talk, they're going to have to tell him the pack of lies bound. Well, the whole world, east and west, is full of lies. You is an old man. He's frightened of everything. He doesn't think his son is the man to play the informer. Only if he believes it's for the good. Well, he's going to have to convince him. And pretty damn quick before we all get picked up. Not likely to be so nervous, Bern. The way you came in, uh, Ah, in the train. That's dangerous. They'll find the car. Stefan? Tak jest, tak. Tak zrozumiałem. Oczywiście. Jutro ósma. Dobrze. Do widzenia. What do you mean? This is not a public meeting. Journalists are not supposed to know about it. You see our memorial to the December that we are just planning the inauguration ceremony. But uh, maybe I can get for you an interview with Lech Wałęsa. Lech Wałęsa? Is coming here? Lech Wałęsa is here. Leaders of solidarity, the church, three Asians from the West. Christ, they worked it well. Yuri's going to walk through the front door, back into the middle of this. He knew as well as I did that that old man had been maneuvered and manipulated by Dickie and London Central. An insane 
escapade that depended totally on the trust and loyalty between a father and son who hadn't seen each other for 20 years. Success. I'm sorry, I'm not here for an interview. You are not the journalist, are you? No. Out! Whoever you are and whatever you are doing, you shouldn't put us at risk. Kto go tutaj wpuścił? Kto mu dał przepustkę? Trzeba natychmiast go stąd wyprowadzić. Trzeba go natychmiast stąd wyprowadzić. Chłopcy do robot. W tej chwili! Przepustkę prosimy. A pan do kogo? Zaproszenie! Zaproszenie! Let me talk to him, Bernard. We came here to talk to him. Yuri is not alone. You may come check. Point of no return, Bernd. I can take you no further. I've been here before, Rolf. Oh, good. It was the point of no return for me. London Central had sacrificed us with their ignorance and arrogance and stupidity. Pichuri, I hope you never realize they made your son betray you. Why didn't we stay with Wolf, Bernard? He has a dozen places to cross and a dozen frontier guards in his pocket. Who is it? Someone telling you the Browns network is sacrosanct? So we have to put our lonely necks right in the middle of the news? Yuri, we're at the Waldorf. You don't fool me, Bernard. You are as happy about all this as I am. It's worked before. It'll work again. What is it? That Waldorf? They open the gate at midnight. Which one? What gate? Down to the river on the border. They patrol the jeeps along the river bank. The gates left open for them. And for us. And uh, beyond that gate? Also. Clear track through the minefield. Ah. Uh, fine.
track through the minefield. It's directly ahead, in line with those trees. They've relayed the bloody miles. What's that mean about it? Worth it. children. in a minute, all right? Yeah. Teeth. Yeah. 
Oh, thanks, darling. I needed that. I thought this stuff was all meant to be redundant. Our system's under scrutiny. Got a double checks in operation. Worried about security, are we? Oh, not that I know. Don't get too comfortable, Bernie. Dickie Cryer wants you upstairs to share his coffee. And, uh, he sent you his tray of pendings for you to deal with. Different colour the last time I was in here, Dickie. A shade bitter, would you say? All tastes the same to me. This is pure chagger, Bernard. It was fresh roast and ground this morning. <laughs> you really are a terrible tease. It's all very entre nous this afternoon, Bernard. German desk discretions are not of the usual sort. Frank's been on the phone from Berlin. As you know, Frank is to a degree autonomous. But on matters of security, the desk as a whole becomes responsible. I need you to tell me all the permutations. Sounds like a Christmas game, Dickie. This is one occasion, Bernard, when I'd be grateful if you'd refrain from the facetious. I need to know all the permutations in order to arrive at an assessment of source material in Berlin, Bernard. Berlin, I know, is five years out of date. Oh, come along. You used to know all the dark corners and what came out of them. Things can't have changed that much. For instance, I should like to know what Frank might call a usual source. Pretty go. You really do make serious conversation very difficult at times. Permutations, Bernard. Well, Berlin is 99% communications, Dickie. I mean, the actual source could be anywhere. East Germany, Poland, Russia. It all gets channeled through Berlin at some time or another. You ought to ask Werner Volkmann. He used to sit in the communications hutch. Werner Volkmann's the last person I intend to ask. What you're trying not to say to me, Dickie, is that there's been a leak in Berlin. It's our German desk, Bernard. Anything wrong in Berlin reflects on us all. What exactly has been leaked? Berlin stuff. That's all Frank would say. I mean, it's not so much the leak itself, it's the fact that they've leaked the leak back to us. It makes people jump here, Bernard. For instance, how are your Brahms people going to react? Not my Brahms people, the key. You set the network up. Oh, and apropos, and rather Brett Rensler didn't hear a word about this. The last thing I need is him marching in here with all his Brahms network preoccupations. He's very thick with Fiona at the moment, computerizing all his rubbish, so no pillow talk, Bernard. Don't worry, Richard. I'm always fast asleep by the time Fiona comes to bed. No offence, no offence. I just know how easy it is between husband and wife, chit-chat. Put the permutations down in a memo for me. Would you do that, Bernard? Please? Yes. Oh, no, Bernard, d d d on second thoughts, there's no need for a memo. Just a piece of paper. Handwritten. Invisible ink.
I do, do. Well, where have you been out of my life all this time? I think it is you out of our life, Bernie. Go on, I send you Christmas cards. Fiona sends me Christmas cards. Three years we don't see each other, and then you ask me out to tea in a transit lounge. Where you have access with your ID card, and where I go through no passport control. So no one knows we meet, Mitha. Except now I have a um, perfectly and unnecessary flight to Dublin and back. Expenses? I think it's Bernard Sampson on his own. How's the Browns network? I only seen them unofficially. And? Maybe they are a little jumpy these days. Why? What the hell is it all about, Bernie? Do you go over a lot? Two or three times a month. Oh, in and out of the East like that? Perhaps Frank Harrington thinks you're doing some kind of black market racket. Uh -huh. Frank told you that. Frank hasn't told me anything for four years. Now you'll have to ask Fiona what the computers are writing about you in the yellow submarine. They say she's, um... Yes, she has a higher security clearance than me now. She's... She's doing fine. She's very good at her job. How's your Zena? She changed my life, like Fiona changed yours. Have I come all this way to talk about my wife? You have never heard of the telephone? Come on, Bernie. There's been some leak in Berlin. The East is feeding back what has been leaked. Now they'd only do that if they wanted to destabilize someone or something. So, if anything does go wrong, Frank Harrington has your name down. Keep your nose clean, that's all. This is the final call. BA flight 177. So, I have to thank you for the warning. But I also keep an ear to the ground for you. A little nothing for your kids. Remember me to Fiona and love to the kids. Maybe we have tea again. One day in three years' time. Dickie and Daphne met monsters and dog. Looks like a working weekend for you, my girl. Darlings! Hello. Hello. All alone? Open them, Bernard. And hide the cassies from Dickie Cryer. Good lovely, the sticky stuff. Dickie! 
I like to see a real slice of meat on my plate. Hate all these sauces and purees. The French can keep that nonsense. Steady on, Silas. Can't let you defame la cuisine française in that cavalier fashion. Afraid you'll get blackballed by Paul Bacou's sticky? Cooking. Like adultery. It is the art of the possible. Oh, the French have been brought up on odds and ends. You don't want that muck if you can afford proper food. But I think you ought to try la cuisine nouvelle. Don't you, Dicky? Lightweight dishes, with every plate of food designed like a picture. Ugh, big coloured plates with tiny scraps of carrots and leek. <laughs> and puddles of wet stuff that look like cat vomit. <laughs> uh, the beef is perfect, Uncle Silas. But just a small slice. Well done for Sally. Good God, woman. Well done, meat? No wonder she looks so damn peaky. What's peaky? Pinched, anemic, white, and ill-looking. Get some of that down here. Make your hair curl. Don't tell me you want it well done. Uh, bleu, for me. Avec un petit peu de moutarde anglaise. Pass uh, the pomme de terre, someone. Give you something to get hold of. Eat. Mrs. Porter, lay out coffee for the gentlemen in the billiard room. Women and children will be in the drawing room. Fiona, you will take charge of the Fresh Air Brigade. Uh, well, yes, of course. Well, it's no bloody good at ball games, so you better partner me. If you two promise not to quarrel. No problem. If we're only here to play snooker. You break. You have a leak in Berlin, and Brahms IV is acting the goat. Don't all shout at once. I was not aware this leak originated in Berlin. A bit off limits, aren't we? Oh, don't be a bloody fool, Dickie. The GG knows you're all down here. He wants a few heads banged together. Well, one could say if B4 was playing the goat, he's no longer reliable as a source. If there's been a leak in Berlin, it's bloody obvious why he's lying low, and I should have been told about it. The memo's on your desk. It's waiting for Monday morning. Let's establish priorities, shall we? Number one priority being that neither the department nor Whitehall can afford to lose Brahms Four. Possibly you mean your particular branch of the department can't afford to lose him, Brett. Isn't he about the only raison d'etre for your committee? My committee is currently the raison d'etre for the whole of MI6. The DG said you'd put up Bernard's name to sort out Brahms. Well, Bernard's not the bloke to send over the other side. His face is too well known. They'll just sit in his tail until he makes contact. Next thing we know, we'll be trying to figure out who we can swap for him. Bernard's been sitting on his ass in London for the past five years, Dickie. Who's going to remember him in Berlin? At your insistence, he's been sitting in London. And it's you who's insisting now. Children. Please. Your turn, Bernard. Not down there, up here. Have we asked ourselves what we think might have happened to him? I mean, it's not the first time there's been a leak. Brahms four has blown a fuse, doesn't he? Out of the blue? Well, he has been uh, a bit soggy for the last year or so. But then there have been big changes over there. Mm -hmm. PG. What the hell's PG, Dickie? Oh, F.O. Slang, sir. Post Gorbachev. He was also asking for more money. Did he get it? Oh, yes. 
you still maintain your contact with him, Silas? What contact? Well, Silas ran Brahms as a personal control. Personal? We were chums. Sharing girls, falling down drunk together, that sort of thing. And you've been running him ever since? Running him as a sleeper for the first 20 years. That was why he was never blown. The Philby crowd never saw his file. You don't know much about him. It's a very restricted file. In fact, it's a non-existent bloody file. How much do you know? He could walk into this room now, and I wouldn't know him. Everything else about him, I think I do know. That makes only two people this side of the Iron Curtain. Who knows what the poor old sod looks like? A matter of some importance if we're going to decide who's going over the wall to talk to him. So you laid him in as a sleeper. And Bernard activated him. Well, I had no idea he had had direct contact. Brahms Four saved Bernard's life once. At some considerable risk to himself. We found ourselves holed up at Weimar. Usual bloody cock-up. Sada said you'd be feeling like you'd been on the hooch. High in perception, low in spirit. <laughs> First few words you ever spoke to me out there in the park. Hello, you're Bernard Sampson. Uncle Silas says you've just come back from doing something rather dangerous. He's very good at setting me up, your Uncle Silas. He told me to look after you. That's when this whole bronze business started. I just come back from setting up the network. Talking networks. That's what this afternoon was all about. I was beginning to feel quite left out. Listen, if I'd known it was me and not you that were going to hang out to dry, I wouldn't have come. Who is Brahms for? When I was trapped in Weimar, he was the man who came back for me. Brave thing to do for a man as frightened as he was. And now Silas is going to nail me with it. What's his name? Okay, Silas. If Walter knows there's a leak in Berlin, that's why he's jumpy. Brahms, Bernard. Even my walls could have ears. And if there is a leak, 
we ought to be getting him out. Do you think it's Berlin leaking? We were set up in Gdansk by somebody in London. I made a report about that four years ago. The report has been buried ever since. Conjecture and ancient history and paranoia. <laughs> Eternal paranoia, my old dad used to tell me, is the price of liberty. Vigilance is not enough. I'm meant to be knocking heads together this weekend. Not listening to self-indulgence. In that case, Silas, perhaps you could start by being honest. I beg your pardon, young man. Does Brahms IV know you're no longer his personal control? I mean, unless I misread the signs yesterday, it seems control has passed to Brett Rensler. It would have been an absurd security risk to tell him. I send him the odd Stilton and smoke salmon, so he knows I'm still here. You swapped personnel and kept the code names the same. It's been done before. <laughs> Not with Brahms for it hasn't. He's probably wondering who the hell it is on the end of his line. I mean, people have different ways of doing things. The Brett Rensler's no pussyfoot. No wonder he's bloody twitching. It's very lonely out there, Silas. You know that. He asked specifically for you, Brahms. He knows you would never betray him. Wouldn't I? No. I'm not going, Silas. I haven't been through that war for nearly six years. I'd get us both killed. Trust Brett to be teaching a good English girl how to hold a cricket bat. Reading between the lines, I'd say Dickie Cryer's decided the Brahms Four has flipped his lid. I'd say he intends to call in a consultant psychiatrist to study the files. He what? Let the head shrinkers into a meeting and we'll be on the front page of you know which of next Sunday's newspapers. Complete with misquotes, misspellings, bits by our own special correspondent. Kill it, Bernard. Yes, we should ask ourselves in passing, of course, whether some of his paranoia isn't justified. Justified? How? High-level leaks here in London. This request for a list of everyone in London who has access to his files. How about Werner? You're quite a poker player, Bernard. Only for matchsticks. Ever wonder what'll happen to you when you retire? No. No, well, I guess your wife has money. Though I'd say you're the kind of inverted snob who wouldn't want to use any of it. On the other hand, if you were to invest her dough and double it, 
You do no one any harm, right? But join you in moonlighting in the city, you mean? Each time I ask you a question, I find you asking me one back. I didn't know I was being questioned. Are you vetting me? In this business, it does no harm to flip the pages of someone's bank balance from time to time. Well, of course, people like you who've worked in the field always have stuff stashed away in a number to come. What would I stash away? Luncheon vouchers? Vern is in a tough business, Brett. And on very low margins, he has no fat to give me kickbacks, if that's what you're implying. So how's he stayed in business? By scratching. If he goes out of business, we lose a good opportunity and a very useful contact. What kind of bread are we talking about? An overdraft facility. One million Deutschmarks. <laughs> Did Werner Volkmann put you up to this? Oh, I haven't been in close contact with Werner for years. Besides, he always likes to make out he's doing well. So how do you know he's trapped for cash? Because, Brett, in this business, it does no harm to flip the pages of someone's bank account from time to time. According to Lord Modern, there are four categories. Those who have no fear at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. And those that crack up. Everyone loses their nerve sooner or later. You can't go on being frightened every hour of your life. Well, does Brett agree Brahms form might have lost his nerve? How should I know? It's years since I had anything to do with it. How would you feel, Bernard, about a cheap day return to Burnley? How should I feel, Richard? I haven't been back in a long time. Four years? Five. I'm not saying so, Dickie, but you seem to spend the whole bloody weekend trying to keep me out of Germany. B4 at Charlie. Meeting Brahms 4 at Checkpoint Charlie, Bernard. Brahms coming over the wall. Brett didn't seem to know anything about that. If Brahms is threatening to walk out, that's a station's job. German desk. Berlin Field. Oh, not if we consider it a security priority. He's threatening to walk out on an old US passport he's dug up. It would be fairly embarrassing. But fairly dangerous if things go wrong. For him. What do you want me to do if he does come over? Send him back? He just strikes me as the sort of man who might panic. I mean, if he intends taking a walk down Normanstrasse with the KGB debriefers, we'll have to move a little fast. You mean kill him? <laughs> Expedient demise, Bernard. He's one of our own people, Dickie. He's an old man who's been working in extreme danger for us for 20 years. Jesus Christ, is it my turn next? This little trip to Berlin is strictly a one-off. I have no intention of letting you back in the field. I have no intention of going back in the field. Yes, well, you better get down to the yellow sun. Refresh yourself on some of the files. No clearance. I'll ring it down to them. Hello, can I help you? Yes, could you find me those, please? Yeah, sure. Here are your discs and paper. You need an access code. May I? I think you're pressing the wrong button. Look, I'm sorry to have to ask you this, but do you have clearance for these files? Oh, Mr. Sanson, I'm sorry. It's all right. Don't worry. I know my wife makes the rules down here. I wouldn't want to be the one caught breaking them. 
And you're going to have to enter your ID number as well for a restricted file. Okay? I see. All is revealed. Great. Thank you. the action one day. Be your friend forever. Double Cambridge first, don't get sent in the field. You're going to hold that against me for the rest of my days? Hmm? No, on the contrary. Anyone in this building who isn't Balliol Oxford has ipso facto earned my friendship. And what about Jesus Oxford, Samson? Did you ever knock? I hear you're being sent to Berlin. Pity no one told me. Your staff and desk, Samson, you pick up a passport. The DG has to know, see, and approve. And unless I put things to him, he doesn't get to know anything. I saw the DG this morning. He thinks I'm my father. But whoever I am, I'm quite sure he's well aware of where I'm going. Berlin Mackenzie. Mr. Sampson used to be a field agent out there. Used to be very good, they say. Yeah. Well, you should have more respect for men that used to be. like a thief in the night and away again in the morning I don't want Frank Harrington to know I'm here you mean the Berlin office hasn't been told not unless they have a tap into the passport computer here they have but it's run by idiots Come in. they are all clowns up there now Bernie not interested no more in the old Berlin friends. You include me in with them? They pulled me out, Bernie. They pulled us both out, Dan. Look, I lost my nerve. I doubt that. Maybe they just say you lost your nerve. Well, I suppose it should cheer me up to see Berlin again. You never came back to cheer me up. You got married, you got a new car, you don't need cheering up. How is, what's her name? You mean Zina? You won't see her tonight. She's visiting her mother, Munich. I'll show you the photographs.
typewriter, tidy desk, no model aeroplanes. Things have changed since I was last here. Young wives, Bernie, they take charge. You know what it feels like, Bernie, with a young woman. The whole world starts all over again. Is that why Frank Harrington doesn't use me anymore, because I'm married? I wouldn't know anything about Frank Harrington these days. What says a Catholic church, you heathen shixer? She wanted to be in white, Bernie. Big party. You both had invitations. Anna. Where is she? Last time I was here, the checkpoint was like a shed. Charlie looks like a bus station now. But it still scares the hell out of me, Werner. Jeez, how long have we been waiting here? Exactly a quarter of a century. That Vopo watching with his binoculars. He wasn't even born when we started. And we thought the wall would be knocked down after a few days. Yeah, well, we were young then, weren't we? Youth the stuff will not endure. Then come kiss me, sweet and twenty. Checkpoint's closing. Maybe tomorrow, whoever he is. He was a one-off. No contacts abandoned. I don't think he ever meant to come over. I think he was trying to tell us I'm drowning, not waving. Why did they send you? That's a clerk's job. Picking up agents through the wire. Well, I'm a clerk, Ben. That's what I've become. Besides, he was an agent and needed a briefing. She's run off, Bernie. The Coca-Cola salesman from Munich. More her age, perhaps. Or her size. That's who we were waiting for tonight. Someone of the Brahms network. That the only reason they would have sent you. All I want is to put my feet up at home and never have to be frightened ever again. Don't kid yourself, Bernie. Sooner or later, they'll be sending you back over the other side. If it's Brahms, you are the only person they can send.
you ever say hello to a girl you almost married long ago? Did she smile that same smile and give your arm a hug and a gesture you'd almost forgotten? That's how I feel about Berlin. Berlin is home. Why should I be so afraid? Very top. It's my old nursery, Frank. Uh, Frau Hennig does have better accommodation, Bernard, or are you saving on expenses? I'm sentimental. Like you're sentimental about letting your old friends know you're back in town. What was it last night, Harry? A dustbin job, a check my Charlie. I should be told what's going on on our little island, laddie. Maybe I don't like to be clocked in all over the place. Like you've just been clocked in. Are they watching you or me? Well, it can hardly be you. They've been there all night. Why do they think they are? Soon toss their tails out of here. Who's dustbin, Bernard? Oh, just a maybe you didn't turn up. What a coincidence. The road back just in time for leak number two. And don't worry, it wasn't Berlin, it wasn't German desk. This came out of London before it was boomeranged back. I must say, I think I should bloody well know what's going on. A bit old-fashioned, isn't it, Frank? Was it hidden under somebody's petticoat for the checkpoint? Telephone. One floor down. <laughs> I want their asses kicked back over the wall. Last time I was up in this little room was the evening your father organized that surprise birthday party for Frau Hennig. <laughs> he had a six-piece dance band downstairs, all dressed up. <laughs> Too much drink for a young probationer like me. I passed out on that very bed. Not, I hasten to add, that your father had any idea we were all drinking moonshine. Not one to mix with the black market, your dad. And God help anyone in Berlin Field who did. 
Who knows? None of your old school Oxbridge nonsense for him. Or you too. Come to that. Well, it gets to be a bit of a handicap, doesn't it? You are Berlinerish, Bernard. This bombed out old city was your education. People who were brought up here in those days didn't need universities. <laughs> you gotta put that in writing and tell them in London. <laughs> You still miffed about Dickie Crabbe picking up the German desk? Hmm? Well, knowing Berlin doesn't exactly teach you a lot about office politics. And in that particular subject, Dickie Cryer has read a PhD. <laughs> what do you make of them? These? Spielzeug, Frank. Fairy tales. It's a lot of guesswork somebody in Moscow's dreamed up to get us all worried. Uh. You'd have to say that, wouldn't you? Whatever it is, London Central has to pretend nothing's wrong. They look to me like a photocopy of SIS minutes, straight out of London office. And then boomerang back as a crude attempt. They're trying to undermine Brahms, are they? Is that what last night dustbin was all about? Sounds like Dicky, if you weren't meant to tell me. London Bloody Central. Why do you suppose they were watching you? Oh, maybe someone trying to tell me to stay home in London? Mm. What's the line of dialogue these days, Frank? Beat it, you Soviets. You're loitering with intent. You intend loitering with intent, man? Hmm. Cheap day return, Dickie Cryer called it. Hmm. Stay and have a look around. Then you can go back to London and tell them the rodent is somewhere under their desk. Not mine. Hmm. Oh. Come to supper tonight. Hot luck, informal. You're still here. Where were the papers left? I was in the Turkish quarter. How were you signalled? Letterbox key. Who sent it? A girl. She dropped it. In the palm of my hand. for you. Are you well? Yeah. Happy? Jenna. <laughs> Fine. Why don't you come over and have a cup of coffee? With your old friend. And Frau Samson. Um, my mother or my wife? Well, your mother first. Don't you think so? <laughs> <laughs> they're both well. And the kinder? Oh, the kinder. They're growing up too fast. Ah, we get to see you then. <laughs> Danke. So nothing changes? Nothing changes. Everything changes. Look at me. Look at my ugly old face. The decaying body. And you'd say nothing changes. Life is cruel, Bernie. You'll discover it too. Life is cruel. You were always the prettiest girl in Berlin, Freiheit. So, you shouldn't complain. You are a terrible liar, Frank. But you may tell me all those lies as often as you like. And shall I tell you how often I've fallen in love with you? The presence of Bernie?
Are you both still in pharmaceuticals? I hope you don't intend to go over to the other side, Bernie. They have all the medicine they need now in the East. And they are getting pretty rough as medicine sellers. I'm not going anywhere, Liesl. This is just a holiday. Holiday. <laughs> yes, with the two of you talking like conspirators at seven o'clock in the morning. Have you seen Werner? Yes, he brought me here last night. I still remember the night he was born in this house, Frank. With his father hiding upstairs and his mother lying on the kitchen table. A very bad air raid. One of your English bombs, Frank. Stopped the church clock on Kurfürstendamm. It's been half past seven for the last 40 years. I always tell Werner that he stopped the clock the night he was born. That clock's been going again for the last six years, Frau Heineken. Which shows how much you're getting yourself out of the house these days. <laughs> Werner, yes, he was lucky. I mean, I don't suppose there were many young Jewish boys knocking around Berlin in the 40s. Werner survived because his father was a digger of graves in the Jewish cemetery in Weissensee. He was born lucky. Most of the time, he still needs his luck. Thank you for the coffee, Rohan. One day, you must come to dinner. Preferably when the two of us can be alone. Certainly. Bye, Frank. Tell me, Bernie. Is Werner in some sort of trouble? You know, I give him half of my life savings. He said he could make them work better for me than the banks. Well, Werner will never cheat you, Liesl. <laughs> well, a woman on her own is helpless. No one will ever tell her anything. Auf Wiedersehen! Auf Wiedersehen! <laughs> Frank is a naughty boy. Who told you about Frank Harrington being a naughty boy? For instance, Mrs. Harrington spends much too much time back in England, and Frank has got other amusements. Ah, oh, they have a large house to look after back there. Frank owns houses everywhere. You ask him, for instance, about the one he's got out in Lübars, where he keeps his popsies tucked away. I'll show you. Wait a minute. Diese alte Esel. Immer hinter jungen Mädchen her. Dabei könnte glatt ihr Großvater sein. Frank dropped an envelope here one day, and I forgot to give it back to him. It was to Mrs. Harrington, post office box number. Maybe you can give it back to him. Hello, Yates. Mr. Bernd, what on earth are you doing back here? Four years, Axel. Five. My father counts the days. Rolf, how is the old bastard? Always asking after you. I can't think why. Not want to make a social call, Bernd. Post office box numbers, Axel. Impossible. That citizen's privacy. I'd lose my job. 1,028-425. We all figured you'd grow up to be a gangster. Did we ever tell you that? Oh, yes, many times, Axel. Like we told you, you'd grow up to be a left-handed cop. 1,000 is Berlin. What's 28? Libas. Tomorrow lunchtime, Axel. Street, name and number. I'll come to your house. I'll come to your house with some old stories for the wife and kids, Axel. Hmm. 